What's up, y'all? Bow Sage. Welcome back to a new video. Different video of sorts. Today, I plan to be talking about Peacemaker. What is Peacemaker? It is a new show on HBO about one of the characters from Suicide Squad. They recently redid Suicide Squad. It was significantly better than the first. The format of this video that I'm feeling so far is I'm going to go on a rant about movies and stuff and the TV show. Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, whatever. And see how it goes? So let's, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Suicide Squad. The origin of the character Peacemaker. Um, what did I think about the movie Suicide Squad? Uh, James Gunn was directing this. He's the same guy who did the both of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Those are my favorite Marvel movies. Um, I actually didn't like the new Suicide Squad crazy, um, crazy much. Uh, it was significantly better than the first one, but it felt kind of off. The dialogue was a little excessive in the swearing category. No, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! So that was one of my complaints about Suicide Squad. The second complaint I had was the ending. The ending to spoil the entire movie. Um, giant alien starfish are revealed to be the bad guys. And they were captured by humans. And then they killed the starship, the star space starfish. They killed it. Starro, the conqueror, is what he's known in the comics. And they killed him. It was like nothing. They just murdered him. And that was the end of the movie. And it felt very unsatisfying because of it. Not just from a comic book standpoint where it's like, oh my god, that's... Stara, oh, he's dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> More so than that, it felt as if nothing had happened. You know what I mean? That my time had been wasted throughout the movie. There wasn't significant character de character development nor insight within the characters that made it worth not really having a villain like that. The characters, for the most part, stayed the same throughout the movie. Specifically Peacemaker, which, but we'll get into why later. Specifically Peacemaker, um, I, I, I felt like it was unsatisfactory. I felt like it was unsatisfactory. But that's neither here nor there. The Suicide Squad, enter Peacemaker. So I had already had an initial distaste of the latest Suicide Squad. There wasn't really anything special about it. No, it wasn't a successful blockbuster. For me, like, I, I wouldn't watch it a second time. And so I was a little hesitant to start watching Peacemaker. I didn't even like the first movie. Why would I watch a TV show? I like James Gunn. I like the, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Maybe I should give it a chance. And from the first, they released the first three episodes at first. And when I watched those, I knew my hesitancy was founded in some reality. The swearing was, or felt, just as bad as Suicide Squad. Not that swearing is bad. It's just downright excessive. It's, it's, it doesn't feel like how normal people talk, if you know what I mean. But part of that was because of its aesthetic. Peacemaker was going for a very much rock and metal kind of vibe. And so let me use that to start to get into why I like Peacemaker. First, let's talk about the camera. So I don't have too, too much to say about the camera. I'm not a cinematographer. I'm a normal person watching movies. So forgive me if this maybe feels too easily identifiable or something along those lines. I just thought it was cool. Uh, there was a lot of wide shots, not necessarily wide shots per se. I don't know the technical term for it. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a layman, but I, I, the only way I can compare it is like the, the 0.5 for the, the iPhone, it felt like it was a wider shot. Yeah, it was a wider shot on characters, and it kind of helped with that feeling of like, like whoa, what the hell is going on kind of thing. And they used it a lot to show like movement, like going from two characters having a very uncomfortable, awkward situation, and then boom, the three of them, oh my gosh, this is, this is ten times more awkward because there's another person here this whole time. 
Um, it, it was something I hadn't seen recently from other movies or shows. I hadn't. I just hadn't seen that. I noticed it. I thought it was cool. And there was a lot of grounding of the camera. I don't know if that's the right term either. Within certain scenes, there were two that I'm thinking of specifically where the characters are in a van together and they're having interactions and stuff. And the camera's right there in the mix of things, and it's kind of wobbling a little bit, and it's moving all over the place. And it feels like, or it does a very good job of making you feel like you're in the scene too, and you're experiencing the same situation as they are. Which I thought was cool. I appreciated that. Now to move on to what I'm sure everyone is more interested about, which is James Gunn. That's another, the second reason why I liked the show was James Gunn, All right? I obviously, I already stated, I'm a big fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Those are, in fact, my favorite, Mar- my favorite Marvel movies. Um, and so I, I, I would like to comp- I, I went into it with the intention of, I've seen three James Gunn movies now, The Two Guardians and Suicide Squad. He's been given... A little, arguably, a little too much freedom to do whatever he wants. So, because of his success. So, let me see Peacemaker and see how crazy James Gunn goes and what James Gunn likes. And it was very interesting watching that. In this show, Peacemaker, maybe he just has more time than in the Suicide Squad movie. He has literally more screen time to do things, develop things, or whatever. It was a lot of characters in Suicide Squad. Most of them died. So there wasn't really as much time to meaningfully develop char- certain characters because they were going to die immediately anyways. So, but that's part, of, that's part of what he was going for. In Peacemaker, now that he does have that time, he uses music. In Guardians of the Galaxy, music, 80s, rock and pop are, are, are used as a means of within the setting, within the scene. The music is more often than not coming from the characters themselves. Music is used to help characters understand what they're feeling and even help them communicate what they're feeling. With a wide variation of emotions extending from a father and son kind of bond, a love kind of bond and just happy feelings you know happy songs mr blue skies whatever so that's why that that's why music was so successful in guardians and so given that had was music used in peacemaker and in this one as opposed to the classic rock and whatever music was going on in guardians This is very different. This is hard rock. This is metal. This is punk, you know? Or maybe not Maybe not exactly punk. Maybe not exactly punk. I don't don't know. I don't know. But it's that kind of aesthetic, that kind of vibe that they're going for. And so music was used different, despite that similarity of the focus on music and the characters liking that music and wanting to play that music, like it's happening within the show, as opposed to just there's music playing, they can't hear it. There's music playing that they want to hear. Um, But the difference between that and Guardians is in Peacemaker, I noticed that music is not, in fact, used to communicate emotion between characters other than yeah rock you know what i mean in guardians an example would be star lord was telling gamora hey you know let's get you know i like you by playing music here no that's that's ridiculous they don't they don't play that maybe if there is like a sad scene or they are trying to give an emotion other than rock and it's a different, more complicated emotion, they do use, like, a full song, and it'll have scenes of all of those characters individually. It's not meant to communicate between the characters. It reflects on them individually or happy as a group, which I don't think is good or bad. I just thought it was interesting. It's something I noted 
the second comparison with Guardians of the Galaxy would be the slow motion walk stunt that the characters do. They always do it. Guardians of the Galaxy, there's three or four scenes of the full group walking in slow motion and whatever. In Peacemaker, it feels like there's 15. There's almost one every episode. But what I at least, what what I appreciate about it as opposed to it being just badass, they're all walking, whatever, nothing to it. It at least does have the depth of, hey, look at which characters are injured, look at which characters are maybe looking at each other funny or how they're interacting with each other as a group or as individuals despite having and ignoring those issues in order to do the badass slow motion walk before they go and fight. So it's not just badass slow motion fight, walk. Um, But that's kind of what it is a lot. Last thing I'm going to talk about is the characters. Like I said earlier, in Suicide Squad, the characters didn't really have any development. And to be more specifically, in Peacemaker, the show follows both John Cena's character, Peacemaker, but also the people in the office in Suicide Squad. They sat in the office and complained the whole time, and they did, in fact, have the most character development Because they decided to ignore Amanda Waller's orders and they knocked her unconscious, which put them in hot water with their boss. I don't think that that was a crazy amount of development, but it is the, it is some, it is some development. So I feel like it is noteworthy to talk about. And so taking those same characters and adding in a couple new ones, they go and this is Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Okay, well, I'll talk about Peacemaker last, but let me talk about the office people first. Um, all of them have something going on that makes them their situation slightly different than their comrades. Economist is insecure about himself and including his dyed beard. My beard is not dyed. It's actually perfect. Um, the his was dyed because his beard is not perfect. Our court was kind of, kind of dealt with a lot, dealt with like sexism at times. She was more of like a leadership kind of role. She was like the number two, but despite that, she was still very much like, what the hell is going on? There's a lot of craziness going on because the, the show does get very crazy at times. Out of bio was struggling with her wanting to love and protect her wife from all the shit that she's dealing with while also wanting to quit her job because of the shit that she's dealing with and struggling with the fact that she may be good at this job in the worst possible ways. I will say no more than that. I don't want to spoil the show in case you want to see it. I already did spoil the show. (laughs) Her mom spoiler alert, is Amanda Waller. She's kind of evil. Adebayo was kind of maybe doing the same cold, hard shit that she was doing. And she was doing it excellently. Crazy. Vigilante was insane and had kind of a best friend complex with Peacemaker. Think of him as a uh, powerless, needed validation from Peacemaker version of of Deadpool. Mern, he was the leader of their group. He was an alien living inside of someone's face who had to deal with the regret of his decision to have killed someone. He's a pacifist. While also struggling to lead his team of idiots to defeat his friends and family bug aliens wild show and finally peacemaker so like i've said more than once um in suicide squad peacemaker had no development from point a to point z he was the same exact character he was a badass with a gun who would kill any woman or child he needed to for peace very self-explanatory 
and his actions from the movie come back to haunt him in the present. He was told by one of the main characters in the Suicide Squad movie that he's full of shit, he's a little bitch, and his creed is dog shit. And Peacemaker realizes this guy was kind of right. His past is brought up, he has to deal with that, his racist father, his desire to no longer want to kill, always seeming like a douchebag, and letting people in so he can finally have like a real friend. That's a little introduction to the characters, there's a lot more to it than that, but I thought it was very cool. Um, final thoughts of the show, I thought it was very James Gunn, I appreciated the comic book references, and I very much thought that the series worked much better than the film. Thank you all for watching. I, I highly recommend checking out Peacemaker. It's on HBO. I'm thinking this is what, Mar what DC is going to be doing from now on, because their Snyderverse thing failed before it could start. And even though they they released the Snyder Cut, that's no longer that's not canon anyways. And it seems like they're trying to reset their movies with more of those solo Joker and Batman movies and maybe use the upcoming Flash movie as a way to reset into the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker kind of reality. I'm not sure. I'm overthinking it because I'm a DC nerd. I also happen to be Batman. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, Bassage out. Peace. Maker. Ah. Uh whatever.